bit of salt boxing over. And that's the theme tune for Free Speech Fridays, the last half hour show or so of my show. It's just chewing the fat, having a talk about what's going on in the country with a couple of invited guests from our roster of smart, engaged, uh, right-thinking, or indeed wrong-thinking people. Who cares? So Free Speech Fridays today, we have got um, the man who would have been mayor but uh, abandoned his campaign so Wayne Brown could eventually win. Uh, Leo Malloy, how are you, Leo? Good morning. How are you, sir? Very well. And commiserations, though she ran a good fight, to Christine Rankin, who ran for Mayor of Taupo, but thankfully didn't get it. That means she's got more time to talk to us on Free Speak Fridays <laughs> on the platform. Christine Rankin, how are you, Christine? Good morning, Sean. Well, I've had a bloody awful time, if I can say so. Not only did I lose an election I thought I was going to win, I've broken my yeah. elbow really badly and I'm recovering from a flu, the, the like of which I cannot remember in my lifetime. And it's been quite a long lifetime. So it hasn't been a great week for me. Well, how did you break the elbow? Let's start with the elbow. How did you break the elbow? Oh, God, and I've experienced the health system up close and personal, which I intend to do something about when I'm well. Um, I watered a plant in my kitchen on tiles, and I overwatered it. You got water on the floor and you slept. Yep, like a glacier, and it's very badly broken. It's plated and it's wired, and it's, oh, I can't oh, and stand hurt. to be held back. Oh, it's bloody awful. It's oh, awful. that will and, hurt. Um, Experiencing the health system, by golly, I'd like to talk to you about that one of these days. It, we are in such a bad, bad, bad state. But that, I was no. meant to experience All right. And now, was this before or back. after you didn't win the mayoralty of Taupo? Oh, breaking before. The before. Oh, uh, shameless I knew, I, 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 knew the, I, I knew the planets weren't in a good place when all these things happened. I didn't. Uh, I thought, I'm not going to win. <laughs> But look, you got to move on, don't you? Yeah, both those things will heal with time, uh, Christine. That is the good, of the good thing about of them. Of course. But seeing I've got you both here, seeing you are both involved in local body uh, campaigns, just interested in an overall sense when you look at the results around the country. What do you think, Leo, that these results say about New Zealand and where it's at, apart from the fact that no one gives a toss about local body politics? Well, they do give a toss. I mean, a lot of people did vote, and those who didn't vote made an informed decision not to vote, so that's still a democratic process. I think it reflects a degree of discontent, disillusionment, and almost despair with what's happening across the wider country. There's been a pattern across the country, despite the Labour Party's assertions to the contrary, particularly in Auckland here. Um, but, yeah, I yeah. think it just shows that we're not happy. Yeah, it also, I guess, shows that... <laughs> All the fear about VFF and strange candidates, actually people, uh, pretty standard people got in. We didn't have any hugely abhorrent results apart from Wellington where the Greens ground game and the splitting of the centre-right vote meant that Tory Farnow got in and I might as well drive the Range Rover off the wharf in Wellington because I'll never be allowed to <laughs> park it anywhere in Wellington again. Um, what do you Wellington think, Christine? Joy, Was it a vote? <coughs> yeah, sorry, Leo. I was going to say, I think Wellington's quite a, a unique type of um, situation compared to the rest of the country, though, because growth in public service, clearly a lot of bureaucrats down there, they don't really have to yeah. deal with the drama and discontent that we've had to around the fringes of New Zealand. They've had it pretty easy down there, in my view, so it's not a, not a surprise that they swung the opposite direction to the rest of the country. Mm. Do you think it does indicate, in a national sense, um, Christine, a swing away from Labor from the incumbent government, the local body results we saw? Yeah, I do. I think people are pretty desperate about what's happening in our country at the moment. I think we are on the edge of disaster in so many different areas and people are very frightened and they, I think they've got a feeling from all the thousands of people I've talked to that no matter what they do, nothing is in their control anymore. It, it, there are policies that no one's ever discussed or debated with them that are changing our country and they're not allowed to say anything about it. So what's the point? Um, I, I think yeah. older people are still determined that they are going to somehow have their say, but a lot of people have given up. 10,000 people voted in Topol. That is, that is dreadful. That's out of a population of how many? 40,000. 
Wow, so that's 25% turnout. Yeah, you can hardly... Who did win there? Uh, David Who did Chihuahua. win in Taupo? Yeah, David Chihuahua. He like? He's the... Um, look, he's my, he's, he's, he's my mayor. I, 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 I will work with him very well, I'm sure. I have in the so past. He's been stuff. around a long time and I'll do my best. That is so diplomatic of you and so constructive of you, uh, Christine. I absolutely uh, congratulate you uh, on that. Um, so, so Wayne Wayne Brown gets in in Auckland, Leo, and you had something to do with that because you made a tough call. You pulled out that I think then led to the deck pulling out. It coalesced things on the centre, the centre right, um, and really it was a bit of a no contest at the end. I was quite surprised. Yeah, I, I wasn't surprised, and I think people who had access to the uh, inner workings of the polling that was being done weren't surprised. I mean, there's a massive swing, 60-40. Uh, the city had swung. That's always been a red city, Auckland, but it's gone blue, and particularly areas like Rodney and, and Franklin, which clearly are the provincial rural, rural areas. This particular type of person voted, and Wayne Brown had a very smart campaign. He, he only went fishing where the fish were. Um, some people went all over town looking for votes. He focused yeah. entirely on the 50-plus homeowners and a particular type of person, and he, he reaped the rewards for that. So that's the sort of person who's thinking. That's the sort of person who's uh, au fait with what's going on in politics at the local body level and the, and the central government level, and that's the sort of person who was motivated to vote. And he went looking for them, and he found them. He did a great job. He had a great team around him. And it sure, sounds I, to me like you've got... yeah, Yes, Christine, yeah. No, I, I believe New Zealanders want their country back. They want some power and control. And I think this was just one message about that. I, I, yeah. There's a lot of, you must know on your station, I mean, your station is getting more and more and more popular because people feel they have a right to say what they actually feel with you guys where, you know, they'll get yeah. cut off somewhere else if they say the wrong thing. New Zealand uh, uh, A few people this week feel that unless I agree with them, unless that I absolutely huh. agree with them that they're not getting listened to, but I don't have to agree with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there no, is... Yeah, I, I think, and I'm really interested in the Wayne Brown result. i, I got to say, you sound almost a, a little bit optimistic about your city, um, Leo. Well, I'm absolutely loving the way Wayne Brown's giving it a shake in the first week. I mean, I went to his party Saturday night and we had a very brief condo about how it might evolve, and I think he's done a splendid job. He's rattled the cage well and truly, and you've got these bleaters from Auckland Unlimited and Eki Panuku, they're all bleating and saying how they've been victimised and harassed and picked on, and Auckland Transport's already had one major capitulation, but this is the whole point. This is the reason voters voted for Wayne Brown, to do exactly what he's doing, and he's following the script. This yeah. is his mandate. This is what he ran on. So they, these people can't bleat now. They should do the honourable thing, either lift their game and that's virtually impossible because yeah. the majority of them are incompetent, or bugger off, just get, you know, go into the, yeah. like, um, what's the name, the lady, Adrian Young Cooper did from Auckland Transport. She did the honourable thing. She up and off. And I think yeah. Paul Majuri will go within a week. I'll be surprised if he lasts very long. He's, uh, his position's untenable. And Auckland Unlimited, Nick Hill, will have to go as well. And there'll be opportunities here to bring in some more progressive people, some more innovative people, and some activators, people who actually get things done. Yeah, I'll tell you what has disappointed me, particularly in the context of Auckland when I look on social media. You know, a bunch of the lefty trolls and everything who aren't prepared to essentially live with the result of what democracy has delivered and say, so, oh, Auckland's stuffed, I, that's not, you know, Wayne Brown isn't my mayor. Well, get with the bloody program. That is the system, isn't it? That is the system. That's how it works. Hey, hey Christine. That is our democracy, and whether you like it or not, it's it's the same with every election. You get who you get, and you live with that. But look, if people are really worried about it, they should actually get out and vote, and mm. they don't. And the ones that don't vote are often the ones who complain the most. Yeah, yeah two or three I, media I agencies up here, two or three media agencies that appear transfixed with small matters like Wayne Brown's salary and they want to know yeah. how much he's earning and how much he's giving in return for it. But they neglect to focus on the fact that there are 40 members of Auckland City Council staff who earn more than Wayne Brown, four zero members. There's 13 members at Auckland Transport alone. No one knows what they do, who earn over 300000 per year, including their legal advisor. It's bizarre, the pay structure of these CCOs, yet the media is transfixed by Wayne Brown's salary and how often he's going to go to work. It's quite... They're very vituperative. They're not able to accept this, the situation that's evolved. They read it wrong. They read the tea leaves politically wrong. They got it all wrong in the way they thought it was going to be a close contest. None of us thought it was going to be a close contest. It was always going to be a landslide, always a blue tsunami, and it happened, and they can't deal with it. Mm.
All right. Um, look, the other thing is I'm be really interested the next time I go to a council urinal in uh, Auckland. Is there going to be a picture of Simon Wilson there? <laughs> Dear old Simon. He's a, I, I sort of feel a bit sorry for Simon. He's carved a wee niche for himself in the extreme left, bike lane oriented, bike lane centric. But he's been humiliated by this result because he had high hopes for a peso, uh, as did two or three other people yeah. in the media. But yeah, it has yeah. been humiliating for Simon, and now he's seeking revenge. So, but I think Wayne did the right. Yeah. That was only a joke, anyway. It was only a piss take. Yeah. So I don't know why anybody took it seriously. Yeah. What he said. I want to talk about a couple of other results, Christine. Uh, Tim Shadbelt gone after I don't know, being part of the furniture and local body for every. Nobby Clark is now the mayor of Invercargill. A sort of a sad end for for Tim Shadbelt, I thought, Christine. Yeah, I felt really sorry for him too. I mean, he he's a New Zealand icon in so many ways. Um, he's been around for such a long time and been very controversial and stood out and been different. And he gave Invercargill a huge gift when he went there. They loved him from the very beginning and he put them on the map. And he stayed too long. He's got, a, well, it looks as though he's got some issue with remembering and knowing things and <laughs> being able to <laughs> function. Old, seen old dementia, um, I don't, don't hold back. I don't, yeah. I don't want to be putting a label on yeah, it, yeah. but he's yeah, in I, a bad I, way. Yeah. And at some stage, you know, he, he's been honoured in New Zealand when he's been right on the edge of everything, actually, and this is just so sad. And to watch those council meetings earlier in the year where he didn't know yeah. what the agenda was or where the page was, I, I, this is wrong. And his family should have nurtured him out of that a long time ago. Yeah. All right, look, I want to move on to national issues. The farming emissions pricing scheme, or the, I guess the idea around it, has been revealed by the government this week. And i got to say, it was a bold move when you're, the tide's going out on you in the polls for Labor to come up with a policy which clearly is going to cause huge concern amongst a group of, of voters uh, who were already probably hostile towards you. Um, predictions that 20 to 25 percent of beef and sheep, uh, sheep and beef farmers um, and dairy farmers could go out of business as a result of this new regime. It's a bold, bold move politically, Leo, isn't it? Yes, it is, but for a multitude of reasons, not the least of which is the complicating factors around Iwi being the biggest landholders of low-hill country in this country. And that's going to be complicated for the government, how to compensate them or offset them without causing further division in society. There's a not insignificant matter of trade deficits while we're running at now $30 billion, and they're saying this is going to cost us over $2 billion in exports and red meat. That's a big problem. Yep. And the third factor that I can't see a resolution to is they're currently campaigning for less exotics, less pinus radiata to be planted, yet this effectively is forcing farmers and other farms to be sold, if farmers aren't going to plant themselves, could land to be sold in central Otago, for example, where it's affordable to plant yeah. plantations of, of pine. So I just can't reconcile the three. I don't know how they, I don't know whether they haven't thought this through, whether they've got a solution that they haven't made obvious to the, to the thinking um, part of the community as yet, but it appears to me to be a fatal flaw in their strategy here. In fact, I'll go further and say the only thing that appears to underpin this strategy is a global perspective of look at me, look at me, look at me. I'm the first yep. one to do yep. this without any logical thought process. So you think it's a virtue signal? You think it's like a national virtue signal? It's how it appears. It looks like the Prime Minister and her, yeah. the people around her are trying to uh, draw global attention by saying we're the first and only country to do this. So what does that mean, though? What, is it effective for the country? Does it make it a better country? What's the material advantage yeah. to the country? And I simply can't see one. Christine? And I... I absolutely agree with that. I think this is about Jacinda. I think Jacinda knows that her time here is just about over and done with. And she's all about being in the history books and making a place for herself on the world stage, which she has. She has it firmly. Why else would we do this? We are a little dot in the world. I love our pioneering attitude most of the time. But this is crazy. And this government's gone after farmers from the first day it was elected. It's never left them alone. This is crazy. That doesn't make any sense at all. And we don't need to be first in the world with this. And I'm not a climate denier. I'm a realist. And I can't mm. see why the hell we would do this. And because the problem is you don't just go after the farmers. You're going after the people who service their tractors, right? Who sell them their yep. feed. All That's those exactly ancillary right. the, services yeah. out in the provinces. Pine, pine plantations don't go down to the local dairy or the local hardware stop to buy a box of oats. 
That's what's going to happen. Your small and the other thing, guys, down. is, of course, you know, no one's denying this. We are the most carbon efficient farmers in the world. So we if are. you take production out of New Zealand, it goes somewhere else where it produces more carbon per tonne of food. There is no you know logic to that, is there? Eight percent of global methane emissions come from rice paddies, rice fields. So how are they going to stop the people planting rice around the world? How, how are people going to survive? They say switch to plant-based or alternative protein sources like tofu. But you're never going to stop poorer countries, third world countries, planting rice. It's going to only increase. It's not going to diminish. So I can't quite see how what we're doing, especially when Damien O'Connor can't even measure the, or quantify the amount of methane we're going to reduce and what effect it's going to have on global warming. So it just doesn't make sense. The whole thing appears to be poorly thought out. Yeah. It seems <laughs> to me too, guys, that you... Out. You pop this on top of three waters and now you've got this. It's like, it's almost like the Labor government is daring people to throw them out of office. It's almost like they don't care anymore. Damn the torpedoes. You know. I think they're arrogant. I don't think that they are absorbing what people are actually feeling and thinking. They think they're going to be okay anyway. Um, I, I, I just... I mean, three waters is the death knell for them, and they still, post this election, are talking about there'll be a few tweaks, but we are proceeding. Well, I, I think there's going to be a revolution out there if this gets implemented, because people feel more strongly about this than anything I can remember in a long time, and I think they're willing to fight. But they're going to get dumped next mm. year if they don't start listening, and they're not. Mm. It, took, it took Lux in a day or so to come out and say... And I don't know if he's really been that definite about the emissions pricing thing, to be honest. It's like, oh, oh, I don't really want to do anything in case someone has an opinion about me, Leo. I don't quite agree with that. I, I chat to Ian McKelvey occasionally, and I happen to be chatting to him today, actually, and um, I was talking to him about it. And they have very strong feelings about what it might um, evolve into, what the ramifications will be. So I would, I would disagree with that. I think Lux and took a careful path while he tried to ascertain the lay of the land because there's a bit of there's not a lot of clarity around this for the fact as I mentioned before there's a lot of complicating factors that have to be considered mm. and I think Lux and the National Party will come out quite strongly against it. All right okay that's fine now guys I want to move on to an issue that is and I don't know if I've turned into an old prude to be honest or an old curmudgeon uh, but it's an issue that I have been um, I've been I've been going on about uh, for a couple of weeks, which is this program called F Boy Island. Um, F Boy Island, which premiered or it's not streaming on TVNZ on demand, it is the most promoted program they have on demand, and it is based on the premise that young people are either uh, terrible sexual predators or nice people, and that you can make a whole reality program about picking about whether someone is an F Boy or a nice boy. Unfortunately, one of the contestants was acquitted of a fairly serious sexual assault and didn't seem to be a nice boy. TVNZ willfully ignored a whole lot of public concern about this. They've gone ahead. The program is now airing, uh, sponsored by Panasonic and heavily promoted by TVNZ. I don't know. Am I, am I an old stick in the mud, Leo? Am I being uh, too sensitive about the sort of crap that's on television these days? Oh, probably. I mean, this is the economics of reality of television, isn't it? And yet again, the irony of Willie Jackson wanting to merge the two, but TVNZ's a commercial entity. Um, reality television is cheap to produce. The rewards are insignificant for the participants. It's fun. It's naughty. They orchestrate the script. This is the very naughty version of reality television. Interestingly enough, it allows three or four women to dominate the show, which is a, a inversion of what's normally a dating show. And there's a few rat pigs out there. But given, I've seen your behaviour around the viaduct on a Friday night plunket, and I've got to say, this, their behaviour at that level is no different to yours. And it's important that uh, a female with a discerning eye... And I don't do it on that. television. I don't do it on television. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's agree. Let's agree that Christine will tell you that a, a female with a discerning eye... Do you know that Christine was born in the same hospital as me on the West Coast? And we effectively were brought yes, up in the same... And we lived in the yes. same little town? Yep. Yeah, there's a segue for you. You're you know, practically brother and sister, sister, aren't you? Well, oh, well, well, I, well, that, well, I looked at I, lo I looked at the similarity in height, and I thought they're from the same gene pool. Can we just pick on you for a minute, Plunkett? So your behaviour is no different to the F Boy Island behaviour at the more geriatric level. If Ryman Health, yeah, but I'm not asking Island, for a taxpayer-funded yeah. television channel um, to fund it, right? 
All, I, all I'm saying is it's showing elements of human behaviour and it's only really... A, can I say piss take on radio? I'm saying it anyway. It's only really a piss take. Yeah. No one should take it seriously, so don't get too excited by it. All right. Christine? Oh, look, I, Would I'm you watch a program you. called F-Boy Island? No, well, look, I might out of curiosity now that you've raised it with me um, because oh, I'd like to see what it's like. But, but, but no, look, I'm, I'm sorry. We, we're always talking about the place of women in society at the moment and, you know, we're fighting for them to be equal, etc. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. All of this stuff contributes to, I don't know, a lack of respect, I suppose. And I am getting and on. I had and Louise Nicholas on last week, on the programme last week. She said she thought it was appalling. And, you yeah, know, Louise I, I think Nicholas it's really said that. sad. It's, it, having sex yeah. now is like having a cup of tea. You don't need to know who the person is. You might never see them again. It happens many times a week. Who cares? Well, I do. And, you know, I've got a granddaughter that's 19. I would be, she's very classy, by the way, but I would be mortified if she was part of anything like that. And I want to hold on to my standards. I believe well, that well, hold, what you hold do on. privately... Can, can I intrude here? The, yep. the thrust of the show, the threat of it, is to diminish and eliminate these boys who behave in an inappropriate fashion. Oh, We're trying to weed... Oh. The, 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 come on, come on. It's, this is true. No. We're trying to weed the oats no. from the chaff here. Yes, it's true. The, the, no. the rat bags get thrown off the island. Is that true, Sean? Look, I, it's interesting that you say this because I've been wondering where Alison Moore and the rest of the feminazis have been on F-Boy Island and they have been notable by their absence. But I think you have given me the answer to why <coughs> and that is it's seen as a gender flip on sexual power, oh. right? Of course it is. That's why that's what you're saying. And who suffers at the end of the day? Who suffers at the end of the day? I bet it's not the blokes. No, the nice boy yeah. meets the nice girl and they win the prize. It's the nice people who get rewarded. It's the rat oh, bags who get good butt. dear God. Look, honestly, we've, we've really fallen to the lowest common denominator, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah, oh, we I, don't, have, I, don't th I don't think necessarily so. It's just a bit of lollipop television for the people who are interested. I haven't watched it. I understand the um, context of it. Though. I do have connections within media, and I've, I did a wee bit of research prior to coming on here to make sure I understood the thread of the show completely. So I think it's been misinterpreted. Yeah. By your the sister, media, so. let's be honest, your sister is the person responsible for, for reality television taking off in New Zealand, okay? Right? Oh, possibly, possibly so, yeah. Possibly, absolutely. <laughs> um. Finally, guys, a question for you both, just uh, unscripted. Have either of you watched any of the Women's Rugby World Cup? No. No. Well, I certainly okay. did. I thoroughly yeah. enjoyed it. Ju Julie's on the organising committee for that as well, I might add, but I was at Brownie's party, but I went and watched the replay as soon as the party was over. I thought it was fantastic. I'm totally in love with Ruby Tui and about six other players in that team. I think they're amazing. I mean, they didn't quite get a sellout at 37,000. They said they did, but it clearly wasn't a sellout. But it's great for the profile of women's sport, great for the profile of women's rugby. Some of it was quite spine chilling. The Haka, for example, was absolutely fantastic. So I think it's brilliant. All right. Hey, and I, thank I've you got nothing both. against it. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I just haven't had time. I'm going to watch on Martin Devon's recommendation, England, France, um, this weekend. He didn't quite tell me exactly when the game was on. Guys, thank you so much uh, for giving me an enjoyable end of a tough week um, um, with COVID. Uh, it is nice to be able to talk to you on our Free Speech Fridays. We will do it again soon. Commiserations for you both. That you're not in thank local you. government. I actually think it's a it's a great thing for the country that you're not, uh, and I mean that in the nicest <laughs> nicest possible way. That is uh, Christine Rankin with a with Not a good, uh, broken good, elbow and, and, and Leo Malloy with a broken morality because he likes F Boy Island. Um, they'll be back on Free Speech Friday very, very soon. I'll be back Monday morning at 9 o'clock.